This video is made possible by my patrons on Patreon. Hello everyone, my name is Ziamaro and welcome to Battlebright Sage. Today I want to talk about something a little bit more, well, meta. Usually I'd be talking about specific gameplay, but it's also fun to talk about more abstract concepts like balance and metagaming. Often when you think of playing the meta, you think of what the pros are playing or maybe champions with high win rates. But really, meta has more to do with pick rates than win rates, and more specifically, pick rates in the league you play in. After all, metagaming is using out-of-game information to inform in-game decisions. That's literally the definition of metagaming. As an example, if you're expecting a certain comp, metagaming would be counterpicking something before you even see the enemy pick it, because it's just likely that the enemy will pick a certain champion. Case in point, I've been playing Paloma less lately because there's a high likelihood of a Rook being on the enemy team. It's not that Paloma can't deal with Rook, there are just better supports for the job. But in any case, that choice is metagaming. And yes, I know, we haven't actually been seeing as much Rook since the most recent patch, but that was kind of the inspiration for this video. So you might be thinking, why separate what the pros do from everything else? Well, quite often there will be some crossover, like Rook and Older. Rook has had a very high pick and win rate in both solo queue and the pro scene. Same thing with Older. But Ivor, who I've mentioned before is part of the Rook meta, and is also a very strong champion in her own right, is kinda absent in solo queue. You do see her, but she's far from being meta. And even when you do see her, you often see people playing oddball builds. Her meta build, which I happen to think is probably her best build, is just a little too supportive in nature, and that's not what people are really looking for in solo queue. A lot of solo queue players favor raw damage output over utility when it comes to DPS picks. Ivor's utility is actually insane, but it doesn't show up on the scoreboard. And people will tell you no one cares about the scoreboard, but they absolutely do. You even see GCs after losing a round saying nothing other than the score of their lowest teammate. So yes, people absolutely do use the scoreboard to determine someone's contribution. And the problem with Ivor's utility is that it just isn't recorded very well on the scoreboard. And as a result, even though she has a really good win rate in solo queue, she isn't picked as much as she could be. Removing buffs and debuffs at the right time can literally be game changing, and Ivor is insane at that right now. And the same thing with a well-timed shield on your teammate, but neither of those things are actually recorded on the scoreboard. Shields on teammates don't even show up in your protection score. So I know it's not always the case, but I've seen a lot of Ivors who don't even run EMP in their build, even though that's exactly what makes her so strong right now, and they pick up something that does more damage instead. So that's kind of my point. Just because something is meta at the pro level doesn't mean it's also meta in solo queue, even if they have a good win rate in solo queue. Okay, so what does this have to do with balance? Well, one of the interesting parts in all of this is Older. He's been kind of like the ugly duckling of battle right since the free to play launch. I remember some people describing him as literally the worst support at one point, which personally I always thought was kind of untrue. But in the last couple of weeks or so, I've seen plenty of people asking if Older might even need a nerf. And that's kind of strange because all of the changes to Older that make him viable now happened at the start of Season 1 in early March. But in that time, the perception of him has gone from he's still the worst support to actually maybe he's a bit overtuned. And the funny thing is, aside from one battle right change, which was a change to a battle right nobody used anyway, nothing else actually changed about Older between the start of Season 1 and the start of Season 2. But in that time, he went from a rare pick to one of the most popular supports. So the perception changed so much much that he was actually nerfed slightly last week. And I know what a lot of you are thinking. Older rose to prominence because of Rook. After all, he works really well with and against Rook. But really, he works quite well in a lot of other situations too. And nerfing him just because of one good comp seems drastic. But maybe he's been too strong for a while now. And to be completely fair, he, along with the rest of the support cast, have been completely overshadowed by either Xander, Ulrich, or both since January. So any balance issues with anyone but Xander and Ulrich has kind of flown under the radar. And there's actually another funny thing with Ulrich. Ulrich was crazy powerful in pro games, but he's always had a negative win rate in solo queue 
you. Like literally, ever since his launch, even when he was really OP, he still had a negative win rate in solo queue. But people still got upset over how strong he was, even though if the enemy had an Ulrich and you didn't, you were statistically more likely to win, even when he was crazy OP. And that brings me to the whole point of this video. A lot of balance is down to player perception. I'm not saying Ulrich was fine and balanced at launch because he wasn't. He was absurdly OP in certain situations. But it's funny because he was never really that great in solo queue, even though you could probably swear he was. Likewise, Rook may have been nerfed recently, but there's been a disproportionately large drop in Rook players in solo queue. I mean, he was nerfed, but he wasn't nerfed that badly. The response to it has almost been like he's gone from OP to dumpster tier overnight, but he's still totally viable. So either there were a ton of flavor of the month Rook players who've gone back to their mains, which is probably partly the case, or some Rook players just think he's not viable anymore because he got a much needed nerf. Of course, the balance of a champion is also interconnected with the balance of others. So it makes you wonder, who else is OP right now and just hasn't had the chance to show it yet? Now, this is just me, but I have a strong feeling that Paloma's insane healing output from Shimmering Bond will become a problem at some point. She just needs a meta that can exploit it. For example, if Destiny ever gets some buffs, she's always been a good champion for enabling Paloma's playstyle. Or maybe Destiny will come back without any buffs. I've actually heard people say recently that they think Destiny is fine right now, people's perception of her is just bad. And actually, the statistics kind of back that up. Destiny actually has a significantly higher win rate than Alicia in solo queue, but Alicia is played three times as often in 3v3. And that kind of tells you something about the perception of balance, doesn't it? So if you take anything away from this video, try to remember that sometimes a champion can be viable, but due to player perception, it doesn't get picked much. So if you enjoy playing a champion, don't worry about whether it's meta or not. Popularity and viability are not inherently linked. I guess you could even say that balance is just a uh, meta of opinion. I'm so sorry. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please feel free to subscribe for more Battle Right guides, news, and discussion. If you'd like to help support the channel and get some unique rewards, then head over to patreon.com slash battlerightsage. And don't forget to check out twitch.tv slash battlerightsage. Until next time, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.